Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sandra for those of you who are new and if you're returning, thank you for tuning in today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more about, as I mentioned in the title, it's going to be about my plant collection. And the purpose for this video is just to do something different on my channel and also I do have people that come over to my house and are always asking me about my plants. Some people don't have plants and don't know how to take care of them. Not that I am the best plant mom ever, but at the same time I do have some tips and tricks as to how to care for plants and which plants are the easiest for me to take care of so those are plants that I would recommend to people to get if you are interested in starting up your own little collection at home so if you're interested in seeing what this video is all about go ahead and keep on watching okay so my first plant baby is gonna be this one right here she's very viney and very green but she does have a few leaves that are a little bit different this one is called a golden pothos i believe is how you say it and pretty much is the easiest plant for you to have in your home when i tell you that this will not die <laughs> it will not die um it's super simple to take care of i always say i recommend a pot that has a hole at the bottom and it'll allow the water to drain. Personally, I feel um, from what I've read that if you overwater it and then it doesn't have anywhere to go, that's how people end up killing their plants because the roots get rotted. So pretty much um, this one loves bright light but also thrives in like a dark corner. So obviously not completely no light, but like I said, it's easy to care for. Um, the other cool thing about this is that you can snip off one of these ends and put it in water and it'll start growing roots and then once it's been creating some roots you can actually repot it so this is a plant that I literally have all around my house because it's so pretty I love the idea of it just getting viney and you can just decorate your home so pretty with it and it just thrives in pretty much a simple environment which is nice so if you're getting a plant for the first time I would suggest one of these and either let it live in water for a little bit or you can pot it and just place it in a corner so I usually have her right here and okay my next plant is this cute little aloe vera plant she is um you know i don't know how old she is i think she might be a year old i bought her last summer but she lives in this pot again it has a little hole at the bottom um and this little pot i usually get at like home depot um, since this is a cactus, um, they don't require much watering. With all of my plants, I have a watering system, so I only water them once a week. Every Sunday, they all get water, and then I do take them outside so that they can go ahead and sunbathe. Um, most of these plants, because they are indoor plants, they don't require direct sunlight, but I just like to let them out, let them live, and get a little bit of sunlight throughout the day, and then obviously that'll keep them Good for the week but yes an aloe vera plant would be um, ideal if you tend to forget to water plants um, these don't require much water so if the soil still looks wet I probably wouldn't water it again because again I just don't want to kill it and overwater it um, but this is a nice little um, other one that I like for the house once it gets bigger because these can get pretty big um, I would love to repot it in like a different pot and just set it like in a corner of the house or somewhere where it's in front of a window so this is another good one okay so this next plant is called a false Christmas cactus and even though they are called a cactus they're not really cactus um, so I don't understand the name of it but these are the plants that you see pretty much during Christmas time hence the name of it um, and the reason for that is that these bloom the prettiest pink flowers on the ends and they only bloom for me year like once a year and that is during Christmas um, and these are super easy to take care of they are indoor plants um, and they like indirect light they do not like being cold honestly if I have her near the AC during the summer she will shrivel and get very very sad so she's a little high maintenance um, but she loves to um, have indirect sunlight and I just keep her somewhere where she'll get some sunlight throughout the day and then um, we do fertilize her after she blooms because we just want to make sure that she does have nutrients for the following year so it's nice because you don't have to worry about repotting her or putting more soil in here um, besides once a year and then you are like if you live in Arizona or California where it gets really warm 
at night. Um, you could even put her outside at night. Um, obviously, do not do direct sunlight because you will burn her. But um, if you live in a warmer climate, you can obviously bring her out probably to your porch or to your deck and at night she will be fine. And then just bringing her back in, indoors afterwards. But they do like humidity um, and just warmth. So this is another good one. Okay. Okay, so my next little plant baby is gonna be this fiddle fig leaf tree. Um, right now it's in this little pot, like how it came when I bought him, but you can definitely repot it once it starts growing out of it, which I recommend is to not keep them in such an enclosed small pot. Um, you do wanna give it bigger pots once they start getting bigger. Um, this one I would not recommend as much for if you're a beginner to like add into your collection right away. I would say get a faux one. These look really cute and you cannot kill those. Um, but these ones are very picky. If you overwater it, it starts welting and the leaves start getting crunchy but if you don't water it enough then it it will also do the same thing so this one i would say is a little bit harder from all of the other ones that i've talked about but they're very very pretty and i love keeping him in my living room right in front of a window like not directly in front of a window but right in front of a window and they just look so pretty um as you know decor pieces in my living room so if you're interested i would say do not go out and buy a super expensive one of these because they can be really expensive if you buy a grown-up one one that's like huge um but start off with a baby one i got him at whole foods i believe a few probably like last month and he's been doing fine and it was only 15 dollars. so that's another thing that I wanted to mention is that if you are buying plants, make sure you start off with like cheaper plants, plants that are indoor plants that are not going to be hard to take care of because if you're spending so much money on plants that are super pretty but you do not know how to take care of them, you're just going to be throwing your money away and we cannot be doing that. So anyways, this one would be another one that I would say if you're maybe like into plants and can take on this type of responsibility um, this be a really pretty piece in your home alrighty so this next plant right here is one of my favorite babies plant babies that I have and the reason why is look at how pretty she is she's just so different so unique and so beautiful the name for these plants are peleas i believe they're also known as the ufo plant the pancake plant and the chinese money tree plant or something like that she has a lot lots of names and is known by a lot of names but her name is P here at my house, and she is just one of my favorites. She's so low maintenance. She's easier to care for than any of the rest of my plants, and she's so simple when it comes to watering. Um, they do like indirect sunlight as all of my ender plants that I keep saying, and when you know when to water her is when her soil starts to get really dry. And even if you tend to be the kind of person that forgets to water your plants, she is really hard to kill. Um, when I bought her, I did get her at Whole Foods. Um, she was like up to here. Oh, can you see it? Like right up to here. So she's grown this whole top. What I love about this plant in particular is that it's similar to this plant right here. Um, they will grow little babies down here. And what I have done in the past is I dig them out and then I put them in water and then they will start to root or you can transfer them into a pot and let them just kind of grow. And so I have three of these, two that are really tiny babies and then her, of course, the mother of the other two um, that are growing, but these are just so pretty to have, so unique, and she lives right in front of my kitchen window. So if you guys are interested in something that's a little bit more unique and different and simple and easy to take care of, she is your gal. Okay, you guys, so this next plant is what I call my problem child. His name is Alfred. And as you can see, Alfred is not doing the best when it comes to thriving. I'm still trying to figure him out. Um, I really don't understand what his issue is. Um, he lives in this cute little basket, but does have a little pot in there. So he does get water when I water all my other plants. I don't know if it's maybe because I have him in my bedroom or, or what. But this one is an example um, that I was saying that, you know, if you don't really know about the plant, you can 
kill it. Um, luckily, he didn't cost me very much, but the nice thing is that I did find an app, um, and I will mention it down below in the description bar. And what I like about it is that I can take a picture of my problem child and it'll tell me what's wrong. So I think it told me that he probably needed different soil. Um, and I probably have to pot him in something that is not as cute. Sometimes even though the pot can be cute, it might not be, you know, where they thrive and well, where they will grow to be the best plant they can be. Um, it's a corn plant. I just got this one probably like two or three weeks ago. And um, they're a tropical plant, which I think might be the reason why um, it's also not thriving because it's kind of been chilly. I mean, it's been warm out, but in my house, it's not always like the warmest. And for tropical plants, they tend to be very picky. Um, but yes, Alfred, hopefully he doesn't die on me and we'll try and figure him out and give him the best life. Uh, but what I liked about this type of plant is that it looked like a palm tree and it just looks very pretty in, you know, your bedroom and corners of your living room or in just any bedroom to just kind of give it that pop of green. Um, so yeah, we will figure him out. Alrighty, so this is my last plant that I absolutely love. This one and my pilia are both of my favorite plants that I own at home and it is a... It's called a Monstera Deliciosa, or also known as the Swiss cheese plant. Um, and the reason for the name is, I believe, it's just because it has these leaves right here that have little holes on them. And then once they grow, they tend to look like Swiss cheese is what they said. But anyways, as for her, like my Pelia and this one, I both got these at Whole Foods along with the Fiddle Fig leaf tree. And she is just so pretty. Um, her name is Cece at home and she loves to be like in an indirect sunlight spot. Um, she's so easy to take care of and with this one it also tells you when to water her you have to make sure that the soil is dry you cannot overwater her and I also have her in this terracotta um, pot where, but she thrives she's been living her best life since I bought her and I haven't killed her and the funny thing about these plants is that if um, you have her in a place where it's too warm which I didn't know that plants could do this but she was perspiring like literally she was sweating she would get um, if it was like the middle of the day like one or two o'clock and it was too hot out in front of that window um, she would start drooping like little waters from her little leaves and it was just the weirdest thing um, so I ended up googling like why is my plant sweating <laughs> and it just said you know that plants tend to get hot and just like human beings we tend to sweat when you know when we're trying to cool our bodies plants do the same thing and I just thought that was like mind-blowing so this is another one that I would highly recommend they're super pretty they grow to be 10 to like over 10 feet tall so once she outgrows this pot, I can put her in a bigger pot and she can just continue to grow from there. Um, and they're just so low maintenance and yeah, just beautiful. So that's, you know, those are my plants. I do have a, um, the app that I mentioned, picture this is what it's called. And you literally take a picture of your plant and if it's kind of dying somewhere, it'll tell you if it's a mold issue, if it has like an infestation of some sort. Um, or like what you're doing wrong and it's nice because then you can fix the issue um, so I would just say stick to a watering schedule maybe download an app that tells you you know if you don't know what's wrong with the plant um, it'll tell you what you can do to it to like fix it and just let your plants live you know it's nice to have them indoors because they do clean your air and they just look so pretty and for me they bring me happiness and honestly if our house could look like a jungle I would totally do it I wish our home had a little bit more um, light areas um, so that I could put some hanging plants and do all of that jazz so yeah I just wanted to share you with you guys some of my plant collection and if you guys like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up do not forget to subscribe at the end of this video and until next time bye guys